Hey YouTube, this is Primetime Pokemon. In this video, I'll be doing some Pokemon TCG online gameplay. I'll be battling with the first place deck from the Roanoke Virginia Regional Championships. It is a Gardevoir GX Swampert Alolan Ninetales GX deck. This deck actually placed three times in the top 64. So I'll head on over to the online TCG, give the general strategy for the deck, and then get into battling. Here's a look at the deck checklist that I'll be using in this video. General strategy with the deck is to get multiple stage 2 Pokemon set up. That way you can utilize super boost energy, which can take 4 energy cards for a stage 2. The way that you get multiple stage 2 Pokemon set up is by using the ability on Alolan Ninetales GX Mysterious Guidance. It allows you to go and get two item cards from your deck when you evolve Alolan Vulpix into Alolan Ninetales. Lots of attackers in the deck, the primary one would be Gardevoir GX Infinite Force can do 30 damage times the amount of energy attached to both Pokemon, both active Pokemon yours and your opponents. Swampert has a very good ability on it, Power Draw. It allows you to draw additional cards into your hand. Hydro Pump is also a decent move. Solgaleo GX is used both for attacking, Turbo Strike can accelerate energy into play, but also for its ability, your Pokemon in play have no weakness. And then of course, Alolan Vulpix here, Beacon can get some Pokemon in your hand that would be useful for evolving. As far as the trainer cards and energy cards go, seven fairy energy, four double colorless, and then four rare candy as you would expect in a stage two heavy deck. Professor Elm's lecture would be the supporter of choice turn one to get the bench started. So let's head on over to verses and see what's out there. Like I mentioned, three top 64 finishes in the tournament. This looks to be a Colorless Grass and Psychic. I've been seeing a lot of Alolan Executor decks out there. I hope this one isn't. It can take down some basic Pokemon very quickly. So a good start here. I'll try and put Alolan Vulpix into the active and then put Mudkip on the bench. I can Tapu Lele into Professor Elm's lecture. I am going first. So this looks to be a Lost Marsh deck, which could be some trouble. I might not actually have to go and get Professor Elm's lecture here. This is Water and Fighting. I think I will use it. Let's see what I can get. I'm going to get another Alolan Vulpix down. Then I can use it twice. Alolan Vulpix into Alolan Ninetales GX. I would like to start setting up on Ralts. I'm going to put a double colorless on here. And then I think I am going to hold off. Let's do it. Let's Tapu Lele and go and get Lily. That way I can keep the rare candy and the fairy energy. Let's see what I have for Pokemon. Three Gardevoir. I do have the Swamper, Sogaleo, both Alola Ninetales. So a good start here. And this deck is beatable, the Lost March one. If my opponent has trouble getting some things in the Lost Zone. So that is a pretty good start here. I could put another Mudkip down. I think I'm going to hold off on that. I can for sure get Gardevoir out there next turn. I can retreat the Alolan Vulpix if I'd like. So I am going to hold off. Actually, I am going to put this out there. That way I can utilize the Super Boost Energy. Let's hold off. I really do not need to do that much damage. So let's pass here. I can do 90 damage next turn with Gardevoir GX if I use Secret Spring to get an energy on the Gardevoir and then retreat 
with Alolan Vulpix, or if I could also Guzma, if my opponent puts a Pokemon on their bench. Sort of strange, they discarded a Jumpluff already. Not to in Jumpluff, the two primary attackers in Lost March. A pretty amazing start for my deck, however. There's another Hoppip. And Professor Elm's Lecture. So they can go and get two Skip Bloom for sure. Maybe another Hoppip or a Not to. Of course, Mudkip would be weak to grass type Pokemon, so I may want to go and get a Cosmog and then Cosmolem eventually. So let's Guzma up one of the other Hopips. It really doesn't matter at this point. Let's do that. So let's Guzma up. Should we do that? I think I might hold off on that actually. Let's Rare Candy first the Ralts. Go like so. And then I am going to Secret Spring first. Accelerate onto the Gardevoir. I can do 90 damage now. I am going to Cynthia, I think. That way I could potentially start getting more Pokemon set up. So I am going to retreat. So there is an Alolan Ninetales. I think I am going to use Timer Ball to go and get a Marsh Tomp. So I'm going to retreat here. Retreat for the Gardevoir. I can knock out a Hopip. Now I'm going to use Timer Ball. There's one, so I can go and get the Marsh Tomp. I do not have one. So that is disappointing. Let's see. I'll go and get the Swampert. That is what I'm going to do. Because I can get rare candy when I evolve the Alolan Vulpix into Alolan Ninetales. And then I'll just knock out the Hopip. I do like the fact that when I attack with Gardevoir GX, I can consistently do that same amount of damage. I don't have to retreat to my bench and then reset an attack or anything like that. So now my opponent gets how many into the loss zone? 5, 7, so they can do 140. Now the max potion is going to come in handy. So I think... That is actually pretty good, especially if Jumpluff has one energy on it, and I could get two onto, I would need another double colorless, which I have in my hand, and they are going to Marsh Shadow. That is a bit disappointing. It's actually really disappointing. There's a Cosmog. That is all right. Not much else I can do. My opponent has three cards in their hand. They may not have a grass energy. I could Guzma up something and Beacon, but I do not have the Marsh Tomp. So I'm going to just use Infinite Force, knock out the Jump Pluff. Hopefully my opponent will not have anything in their hand. They would need a Grass Energy to knock out Gardevoir GX. Of course, Jumpluff does have a free retreat cost, so at least they're not using Cynthia or Lily. So they either did not have it in hand or they already have a Grass Energy and could use a different supporter instead. There's a choice band, and they, ah, they're going to attack with not to. That's a little bit disappointing. Is there anything I could do here? I really have to top deck something. I think I'm going to go here and use beacon. There's a double colorless. I could Guzma. 
and then knock out a not to, for example. So they have seven, they can do 140. So they could knock out Tapu Lele. Boy, oh boy. I really can't do much here, can I? I think I'm going to use Beacon. They can knock out the Alolan Vulpix. So I'm going to have to think one step ahead. I have a Swampert. I need to get a Gardevoir and a Lolan Ninetales, I think. Or I also could get the Solgaleo. Let's get this. Gardevoir. I have a Swampert and I have a Solgaleo. So I need that. Now hopefully they don't use another Marsh Shadow. I know in the deck of Lost Thunder, of Lost Marsh, that is, that did very well in the Virginia Regional Championships. They use, I think, three copies of Marsh Shadow just to mess with my hand, essentially. So now they have two attackers set up and they have Cynthia, so they could Cynthia into another Marsh Shadow. That would really hurt. Right now, I have the Guzma, so I could actually Guzma and knock out the Jumpluff. That is going to help. There's another Choice Band. They're going to knock out the Ralts. I am going to use Guzma, I believe. At the very least, I think I'm going to promote... Let me promote this. I am going to Guzma, I think. So, I am going to get two rare candy here and then get Swampert. Boy, I could do Swampert. I have lots of options. So, I'm going to get two rare candies here. I have everything I need in hand. For sure, I'm going to get one Gardevoir GX set up. So there's the Gardevoir. And then the option is either Power Draw with Swampert or No Weakness with the Solgaleo. I think I'm going to set up the Swampert because I'm going to knock out the Jump Luff. So let's Guzma here. I would desperately need a fairy type energy so I'm gonna get rid of the choice band I need a fairy energy did not get one ouch that hurts big time so what I can do now I think I'm gonna have to ultra ball two things away go and get Cynthia is that the only thing I can really do? Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do that. Ultra Ball two things away. A Brooklet Hill and the Professor Elms Lecture. And I'm going to go and get Tapu Lele and then Wonder Tag for the Cynthia. Go with the Cynthia. I also could use this energy lotto. Let's do that. And there is the fairy type energy. Should have looked at my hand a little bit closer. So let's attach that via secret spring. And then I can Guzma up the jump pluff. Then I'll have Cynthia for next turn, no big deal. I do like the fact that Gardevoir has such a high HP. It'll take two turns to knock it out. I am down to three, and there is the rare candy to get Solgaleo set up, and then I can Cynthia. But my opponent does have two not to set up, so I would desperately need a max potion. I only need one energy on Gardevoir to be able to knock out the not to. How many 
Pokemon are in the Lost Zone now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 180. That's 210, I believe. 210 right now. They need one more and they can knock out Gardevoir. So one more Pokemon in the Lost Zone. Can't do it. 210, I believe, if my math is correct. It is. So I am going to get the Solgaleo out. And then potentially I could Cynthia into the Super Boost Energy. I should have checked to see if the Super Boost Energy was in deck or not. So I am going to power draw away the Ultra Ball. See what I get. Do not want to run out of cards in the deck. I can't Brooklyn Hill to see what's in there. I have a full bench. So what I want to do is I think I am going to Cynthia. But I'm trying to get the cards down in my deck. So doing that will reduce the number of cards by one. There's a few energy cards, so I should be able to do something. I think I can actually retreat this and then I could either attack with Turbo Strike. I think I am going to do that to get more energy into play. So I'm going to retreat here, retreat for Solgaleo, two cards there, let's do that. And then I'm going to attach here. This does enough to knock out the attackers over there. So I'm going to Secret Spring onto the Alolan Ninetales GX. And then I can Turbo Strike. And if I need to, I can always use the GX attack. So I am going to put three on there just because I do not need much for energy. There's the Marsh Tomp, I don't need it anymore. So this is going to go down to the wire. If only my opponent would put a Tapu Lele GX down, they probably do not have one. They want to, there's an Oranguru, Lost Blender. So now do they have enough? Oh boy, that will knock out the Solgaleo. There goes that in my hand. So this might be game over for myself. There's a Cynthia, not bad, but they're going to not, ooh, they did not knock it out? Resistance, boy, that helps out. That helps out, they're going to, they're going to scoop there. That was a crazy ending to this battle. That's why it's important to note the resistance on Pokemon as well as the weakness. Sometimes I forget that and don't really look at it that closely. But that was a good victory there. Not much patience by my opponent. They were probably just upset. They thought they might have been able to knock out the Solgaleo. So that's one win. A long match there. So let's do one more. It does take a fair amount of time to win with this deck because it requires a lot of setting up. Looking for opponent here. Psychic Darkness, Fairy, and Colorless. I did win the coin flip. A lot of times that Fairy is thrown in there, and this could be just by the deck box. It could be a Buzzwool deck with Lola Ninetales GX. We will have to see. That is all I will do. Professor Elm's lecture I do have right away, plus some energy cards. That is helpful. So Deoxys here. Deoxys is sometimes used in Malamar decks. This is probably some type of Shrine of Punishment deck with these two Pokemon out there so far. So let's use Professor Elm's lecture. Let's get out a Ralts, Mudkip, and Vulpix. I could go and get the 
ditto prism star. I think I am going to actually. That way I can evolve it into anything that I would like as far as stage one Pokemon go. So let's do it. And then I will put a double colorless on the Ralts. I do have Tapu Lele in hand. So I'm just going to pass to my opponent. This is week two Psychic. There's Cynthia. So not much in my opponent's hand. They were not able to use anything. And they are going to scoop. So I guess we will make it three games here. So one and one. Actually two and oh. I kept thinking I was going to lose that last game, but did not. So 2-0, and a quick 2-0 and now. Let's go one more battle here. Lots of expanded items down here. Plasma Freeze Packs and then Cobalion EX. Fairy, Fire, Colorless, and Psychic. I like the metal Pikachu coin there. I won the coin flip. I'll go first. There we go. Pretty great start here. Professor Elm's lecture I can use right away. And then I have rare candy already. Plus I have the Brooklyn Hill to go and get a Mudkip. So this would be a Grand Bowl deck that I'm facing. It can do 160, and it is weak to metal. Let's put Brooklet Hill out there. I'm going to go and get a Mudkip. And then I'm going to use Professor Elm's Lecture for a Ralts. I think a couple of Ralts, actually. Cosmog must be prized, which is a bit disappointing. I'll do two Ralts and then another Alolan Vulpix. Let's see what it says here for the Alolan Ninetales. Should be fine. I was just making sure I could use it with Ditto Prism Star. So let's get my bench set up. Attach an energy to the Ralts. And then I will end my turn. Of course, the Grand Bowl deck. The goal is to have zero cards left in your hand when you attack. Then Grand Bowl can do 160 damage. Add a Choice Band, it does 190. Gardevoir GX with that high HP will make... Grand Bull, a two attacking type of Pokemon to get a knockout. It will take two attacks instead of one. So that is big. They have the Oranguru set up already. They want to smooth over first with Magcargo and then instruct on Oranguru to get that card they put on the top of their deck into their hand. They are going to get five new cards there with Tate and Liza. Hopefully I actually win this one and take all six prize cards. They're using Pokenab, a secret rare there. There is the Grand Bull. All out would be the attack that does 160. They are probably set up for next turn. There's two Oranguru, so they have a good chance at getting their hand down to zero. So there's an Ultra Ball. I have a fair amount of things that I could do. I could Lily first. I would need what? Two total energy on Ralts to be able to knock out the Snubble with Gardevoir GX. So I think as much as it hurts me, I am going to get rid of both energy, I think. And then get the, let's see, 
I could go and get the Alolan Ninetales. I want to be able to utilize the ability there. Should I Lily first? I don't think it'll really make much of a difference. Let's do it. There's a double colorless energy. So let's go and get the I need a timer ball would be helpful. I have two rare candy already in hand. So a timer ball would be very helpful. And then an ultra ball just to be safe. So if I can hit on this timer ball, I want to go and get a swamper for power draw to potentially get more energy into my hand. So I really need this timer ball to hit. There we go. I did hit twice, plus I have another Alolan Ninetales GX in my hand. So I am set up perfectly fine. So I want to get a Gardevoir GX and a Swampert out. There we go. So I'll get both of those out. And then I can get another Alolan Ninetales into play if I want. So let's do this. Swampert. And then the Gardevoir. Now I could, I think I am going to, I'm going to be a little bit greedy here and I'm going to try and get another Gardevoir GX out there. Actually, I'm going to power draw first. I'm gonna get rid of the Cynthia. I can use power draw from now on instead of Cynthia. So two max potion. I might, might actually hold off on the Gardevoir there. What I want to be able to do would be to knock out like so. I could do the Alolan Vulpix there. Unfortunately, I was not able to knock out the snubble here. Its weakness would be metal, which I do not have. So I'm going to go and get another rare candy and then an ultra ball. That way, I'll take that back. I'm actually going to get another mudkip out there is what I want to do. So I think I'm going to have to stick with the rare candy. I'm sort of out of options here. So I'm going to have to go like this. Put that out there. I'm going to get another. Actually going to get rid of both of these and get a mud kip so I can power draw twice. Put that there. Retreat here. Unfortunately, I will not be able to knock out Snubble, but I will be able to knock out Grand Bull next turn here. So a lot going on there and a lot going on in this deck. I may have had some misplays there, but that is the problem with so many Stage 2 out there. Now my opponent doesn't have anything set up after this Grand Bull will be knocked out. I would need to get another energy on Gardevoir to be able to knock it out with that bodybuilding dumbbells. There's a Zip Strika. So 40 more. And there was the bug with Zip Strika. They can work around it. If you have zero cards in your hand, you can't discard your hand. So our Nest Ball now. Potentially another mag cargo, no another snubble. That makes sense. They want to have a backup attack or when I knock out this grand bull. So there's the mag cargo. Now they can use another instruct and smooth over. 
So my opponent still has to get down to zero cards in their hand, and now they should be able to with Nest Ball. They can't with Nest Ball, so they have to have... There they go. Now they're going to discard both of the other cards with this Ultra Ball. They can probably just get another... Nope, they're just not going to get anything because they can't play anything, and now they can do 160, which isn't enough, and they are smoothing over for next turn to get something they want into their hand. Probably a Grand Bowl, I would guess. Or a Rescue Stretcher to go and get that Grand Bowl. Here we have a double colorless, so we can knock out the Grand Bowl, I believe. That'd be four. Yeah, that would be more than enough. I could power draw. I am going to power draw away something here. So let's attach. Let's actually hold on. Let's power draw first. Get rid of the rare candy because I could draw into the Gardevoir. So there's a Guzma and there's the Ultra Ball. So I think I may do that. I am actually going to Ultra Ball get the Gardevoir out there. So I'm going to get rid of both, just one of these. I would say, let's do that. Let's just keep the other Gardevoir out there and knock out the Grand Bull. So I'll get that. Go like so. Put the Double Colorless on this one and then Secret Spring here. Should be good to go. Infinite Four should knock it out. There we go. So hopefully my opponent does not get their Grand Bull set up. They probably will with Instruct and Smooth Over. But I do have some bench Pokemon set up and ready to go. Diantha, that is unfortunate. So they can just put two cards from the discard pile. Where is that? Into their hand? Yep. So they can go and get another Grand Bull that's right there, plus a Snubble. Now they're down to zero cards in their hand. And they could smooth over and instruct as well. I'll be able to knock out the Grand Bull. I could always Guzma up something and try and knock it out like the Mag Cargo. That is the key to the whole deck. There's all out. So Gardevoir GX is knocked out. I'm going to have to put up this one and I need some support here from Swampert. There's another Ralts. I'm going to Secret Spring onto Gardevoir GX. Right now I can do 90 damage. I'm going to have to get rid of the Ralts. And that one hurts a little bit. I'm going to have to go like this and then I can go and get, what do I have here? I'm gonna have to get Cynthia. I was going to try and get Lily, but not there. It's in the discard. Cynthia here, there's it. Oh, I was gonna say I need a double colorless and there it is. So that's five, should do 150. I am set up next turn as well. The only downfall here is that we're trading prize cards. They get two, I only get one. So there's the Cosmog, but I don't have any open bench spots right now. That Grand Bull with its HP is pretty good. So there's Shrine of Punishment going to start softening up my Pokemon, the GX, and I have lots of them in play. I would love to get rid of that Mag Cargo. I need that out of there so my opponent can't stack their deck every turn. No way to get that right now. No Guzma in hand. But at least I can knock out this Grand Bull next turn. If they put an energy, and they do. However, my opponent will be down to two prize cards pretty quickly, and I'll still have three. 
So right now, 120 with Gardevoir, I could knock out Mad Cargo. So I could Guzma up something and retreat it. There's a Choice Band. And a Rescue Stretcher. They're going to get a Grand Bull out. Two in there. They could actually use the other option. They are going to do that. What is the final card in my opponent's hand? They're going to just sprint it away. It was an Ultra Ball. The risk with this is that he potentially can't get rid of all the cards. And hopefully that is the case. Unfortunately it is not. My opponent lucked into that a little bit. They're not going to do anything and they're going to all out. Do 190, so I'd love to get a max potion. Did I get rid of both of those? Yes, I did. That's what I was thinking. Only 10 cards left in my hand, so I have to be careful. I would need still a lot of energy there. I could start setting up this, which doesn't make much sense and only can do 80 damage. This can only do 70, so I would have liked to have gotten another energy on. I would have liked to have actually gotten another Guard of War GX in play, but that's all right. And I could have been a little bit smarter using Secret Spring first, but that is okay. My opponent may be in a little bit of trouble here. So I'm down to three prize cards. There's an energy lotto. Let's see what my opponent promotes. I sort of need to top deck into a Guzma now. They're going to try and promote Zepstrika here. So they do have a Grand Bull set up. They're going to need a little bit of luck here because what is the retreat on there is one so they're not going to be able to knock anything out here i wouldn't think they would need an energy and a guzma and that might actually help me there's a palpaz so they're getting supporter cards from their discard pile and putting them back into their deck to diantha And there is the Guzma. What are they going to promote? I would promote a Swampert. Nope, they're doing the Nine Ninetales. There's a Nest Ball. Let's see if they can get down to... They can actually knock out the Alola Ninetales if they get down to... And they probably will... They're going to instruct blindly, so not for sure that they can get down to zero cards in their hand, and they cannot. So that actually helped me a lot. I'm going to retreat this, and then Gar Gardevoir is going to take the knockout regardless. So I might as well just knock out the Grand Bull. That is going to hurt. That is the reason... I wish I had another stadium here. So I have two Brooklet Hill in the deck. And I could get one of them here. Only nine cards left. So I'm actually going to try and get that Brooklet Hill. Let's discard the choice ban. There it is too. There we go. That worked out. So now when I retreat, at least Gardevoir will not be knocked out by Shrine of Punishment. So my opponent will have to knock it out somehow. Let's do Secret Spring here and get this set up at least. It can't do too much damage. But that is all right. If I had the Solgaleo set up, I could heal the damage on Gardevoir. So let's do Infinite Force and knock out the Granbull. 
down to two prize cards now. I don't know if we'll be able to hold off or not. So there's Cynthia. I can refresh my deck there. So four cards in my opponent's hand. If I could knock out their mag cargo, I would give my opponent some trouble. So there they can knock out the Gardevoir for sure, not necessarily get down to the appropriate number of cards in their hand. I am sort of out of luck on what I can do. Only 70 damage with the Alola Ninetales. 30 damage to one of your bench Pokemon of my opponents. So I'm trying to figure out what I should be doing. I think this may be a loss for myself unless somehow I could get the Cosmog set up. The Solaleo that is, GX. I would have to stall a little bit. How many Ralts do I have there? Two. So all my Ralts would be in the discard at this time once Gardevoir is knocked out. 80 damage here won't do anything. 130 here, so I mean it takes two attacks from Alola Ninetales. But I may try and promote something like the Mag Cargo. I don't know if it's worth it or not. Just to mess with my opponent, they would then need a Guzma, which they probably can get. How many are here? Two. I don't know how many they actually use in the deck. I would guess four. There's a Shrine of Punishment. They're putting that back out there. They could just end their turn and it would knock that out, but they do not want to. What can I do here? I just don't know if there's anything that I can really do. Let me promote this I think I am going to just mess with my opponent here and then I can attack some things so I am going to try and get the Sogaleo set up I believe so let's do this turbo strike does 120 but I want to be able to use its GX attack I am going to Guzma and then put in the Mag Cargo. My opponent has lots of cards in their hand as well. Let's do that. And then I am going to I think I'm going to just use Snowy Wind and attack this one soften it up a little bit that way I can actually knock out the Grand Bowl with Sogaleo GX I need to know if it's prized or not I should have known that a long time ago so two Grand Bowl set up right now they only can do 30 a piece if my opponent can't do anything now this will make a difference they can ultra ball a couple of times that actually works perfectly if they have two Ultra Balls and they do not. How many cards do they have left? Five. So my opponent is getting down there. They can't even really use the Zebstrika, its ability, because they'll run out of cards. So this is going to come down to the wire. So they actually use the Zebstrika, so my opponent is going to be out of cards very shortly. They need a Guzma and then to be able to get down to zero cards in their hand and they did not do that so I can knock out the mag cargo here I actually really do not want to have this Alolan Ninetales knocked out either so what I might do I really want to be able to get the Sogaleo in play. I would need the rare candy. I don't know if it's in my deck. I have four cards left. Let's make sure it's not in here first. It is not. So I could power draw everything away 
and then Cynthia. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to power draw the choice band. There is the Solgaleo. So let's do this. What does its GX attack require? Two psychic energy. How many energy have I used? There's four, five, six, seven. I have all of them in play. And they are just going to scoop. I don't know if I would have been able to win that one. My opponent must have known they would have not been able to knock out my active and then they would have run out of cards. So that is three and O oh with this deck. Now this is a deck that I probably would not play with just because there is so much required to do between Gardevoir GX, Swampert, Alola Ninetales GX, Sogaleo GX, just a lot to happen. But Alola Ninetales GX really makes that much easier. So there's a look at the first place deck from the Virginia Regional Championships. I'll take a look at the deck checklist again. So here is a look at it. So there you go. Thanks everyone for watching. As always, before you go, make sure to check out all the links in the description of this video, including links to my blog, Facebook, and Twitter pages. So thanks everyone for watching and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.